Hey, what's up guys? This is Third Generation Conjure and we're coming back with another video. So, um, I do just want to give a brief introduction if you're new. Um, we are Third Generation Conjure. We are a spiritual company. Um, we specialize in spiritual supplies, um, powders, oils, baths, candles, etc. We do have a shop on Etsy um, now, but yeah, for those tuning in that are um, regulars of ours, I just wanted to come on and do a video on um, basically energy, also um, hiring other workers to do work for you, particularly for crossing work and love work, okay? So um, if you hear some shuffling, I got some notes just to make sure I don't miss any points. So this video came about because I've had a lot of people who have inboxed me regarding doing hexing work and also doing love work, okay? And I just want to explain something to you. Now, I did state in previous videos and previously that we didn't offer work particularly online. We do work, we work for ourselves, we work for people locally, but um, not so much offering any kind of services online at this time. Not to say that we won't eventually get into it, but we don't at this time. But um, I wanted to just go over some things that I've had people DM me about Okay, so the first one I want to talk about is hexing work, okay? So, um, I see that a lot of people are new to this practice. And like I stated before, a lot of people want to jump right into hexing and, you know, don't even know how to properly cleanse or protect themselves, okay? So, with crossing work or hexing work is what a lot of people know it as. That requires a lot of energy, okay? And your energy too affects the work. So I want to just give a couple examples, okay? So anytime I do any kind of work, not to say that I've never done crossing work because I have, but I do it for extreme circumstances. Everything doesn't require crossing work or a hex. And I think that a lot of times you should exhaust all means before you even jump into or thinking about doing some kind of crossing work on someone. You know, for example, I'm gonna give you an example. If you wanna hex someone, let's just say your boss, okay, at a job, you wanna sour their life, they're giving you hell. First of all, do some self-evaluation and make sure that you're not the problem. You know, and I, I get it that you do have some people that just pick with you and pick with you. But you also got to think, okay? So, um, you know, I had someone in particular, they wanted to hex their boss, just saying that they were giving them a hard time, so forth. So my first work recommendation is to, first of all, you already need to make sure that you're cleansed and protected so no one can bother you. So I don't have to do hexing work and crossing work on others because people don't bother me because I stay cleansed and I stay protected at all times. So I don't have a lot of issues with a lot of other people. Okay, so we'll say that first and foremost. Second of all, you know, with something something like that, as far as like a job situation, like with this particular person that wrote me about this, I told him, okay, hey, what I recommend you do is, you know, you can try freezing them first. You can also maybe use some boss fix oil to kind of sweeten them up to you or maybe do you a sweetener jar on them just so you can sweeten, up, sweeten them up to you so they won't give you as much of a hard time. Because if you start off with initially doing some hex work like say for instance you know you got people that want to throw people in a jar all the time so you go throw them in a jar and you try to sour their life that's not necessarily saying that you're going to sour their work situation they may, e may even still progress with the souring you may sour other aspects of their life such as their home life so they may start having issues at home they may start having issues with their spouse so then with that being said they're coming to you and they're coming to work because they have all of these issues going on at home and then they're taking it out on you and you're having even a harder time. So now you're trying to figure out what the hell is going on. When you're souring their life, you're souring other aspects, but they're still coming to work and they're giving you a hard time. So that's one thing 
to think about, okay? Also, another thing to think about, even though hoodoo does not involve any kind of karma, karma or any kind of belief in karma, you still need to be justified when you're doing it, some kind of work because the universe may not respond well to you when you're trying to do this work, okay? So just keep that in mind. <clears throat> and a lot of workers, especially ethical workers, they don't want to take on um, take on hex work. They don't want to take on baneful work because a lot of times people come to us and come to workers and they don't tell every, you know, they don't tell the whole situation. And any kind of worker, they're going to do some divination prior to before even offering to take it or even giving you advice on the situation, okay? So, you know, even if you say, hey, I want to hex this person, if we pull some cards and we say, hey, this is not the best route, <laughs> you still want to go through with it. So when it doesn't turn out like you expect it to turn out, you can't be saying, hey, they don't know what they're doing or, or whatever the case may be. And when you have workers who do not want to take on any kind of baneful work or hex and work, that doesn't mean that they can't do it and they're not qualified to do it. Like me personally, I know, you know, I try to keep love and light, but I know that that's not how the world operates. And sometimes, you know, you may need to cross that, that, that bridge and you may need to do some crossing work on someone, but it's not always the case. You know, some people may get mad and then automatically they want to throw a hex <clears throat> at someone, which is, you know, that's not, not that's not the way to do it and then you have people you know who want others to do the work for for them but if you say hey let me tell you what you need to do they don't want to do it for themselves because you're saying and i've gotten a lot i don't think i can do this myself <clears throat> well if you think you can't do it yourself and that's how your energy is behind this whole situation if somebody else does it for you it's not going to turn out the way that you want it to turn out anyway because that's the energy that you're putting in there okay so um even with that being said your energy plays a lot into how your work manifests for you, okay? So with the conditioned oils, with the baths, etc., each herb and so forth carries a different spirit for different purposes. So that's an enhancer of already your power and your intention. So that's what we that's where the oils and so forth come in at. Okay, and even with our um products, we charge it to um you know, for different purposes, depending on what it's for, okay? And um, you will have a lot of people, too, that you need to be aware of that will scam you. Like, my, me and my mom's whole mission with starting this is to teach others, okay? And we want to educate and make sure people are educated, especially so they won't get taken advantage of. You know, I could easily pull cards in a reading and tell you, hey, you've been hexed, pay me X amount of dollars and I'll get it off you. But that's not the way that we operate or that we will ever operate. Just like I've had people come to me with readings thinking that they, they're they hexed when it's really just their own energy and they're their own worst enemy. And I'm going to be blunt and I'm going to tell you up front, you need to get your shit together. Okay. So um, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat that with you guys. Okay. So you know, if you have a worker and they don't want to take your um, your hex and work, that doesn't that doesn't mean that they can't do it or they're not they don't have the ability to do it. They're just not going to take on that energy <laughs> that you have, especially if it's not justified. And then they have other issues going on in their life because of the energy that you brought to them. Okay, that's also a thing with love work. A lot of practitioners, especially ethical practitioners, they don't like taking on love work. I'm all about reconciling, you know, if you have a, a current relationship. But as far as, you know, doing work to have someone obsessed with you and so forth, that's not the way to go. Because even with that being said, if you even if you think about it, you do some work to get someone to fall madly in love with you. They're obsessed with you. Okay. If for some kind of reason that work ever gets uncrossed, then that person is out the door. And do you really want to be with someone that you have to force to be with you? Really? You don't want that. Or even if you have something so strong on someone to the point where you want to get away from them and they basically turn into a fatal attraction <clears throat> to where they don't want you to be with anyone else and they may harm you for you trying to leave them, but you got this powerful 
work or spell on them that, you know, you didn't expect it to turn out that way. So as far as the love work is concerned, a lot of practitioners, me, me too, I, I don't, I don't like really dealing with love work. I mean, I will tell you things to do as far as like a sweetening jar or, you know, anything like that, but I'm not really, um, big on, you know, taking love work for other people. Okay. Um, let's see anything else. Also. Okay. So, you know, anytime you come to, like I said, you come to a worker, they're going to do some divination on the work, you know, and a lot of times we'll tell people, Hey, I think if you do this, this, and this, it's not going to work out or it's not going to work like you expect it to work. Or I wouldn't even do that kind of work because it doesn't look like it's going to work. A lot of people still, you know, say, hey, I'm going to still do it. Okay. Or if you have somebody, you hire somebody to do it and then it doesn't, doesn't turn out, you're going to try to bad mouth the worker when they told you to, from the get-go that it's a slim to none chance of it working out. Okay. And even with that, with love drawing work, I want to get back on that too. So I have people who are trying to work love work on people they may not have even seen or talked to in years okay not to say that it can't be done but you kind of need to be a little bit realistic as well you know i could go say hey i want to marry this celebrity and i go do some love work on this particular celebrity that i've never met he doesn't know me what's the chance of you thinking that's going to work and i'm pretty sure it's probably not Okay, and even when you're doing work, not in on someone in particular, but you're trying to draw someone into your life, you're trying to draw, you know, do love drawing and so forth. Anytime you do any kind of work, you need to be very, very specific with your intentions. Because while you're doing this love drawing work, you may have someone come into your life and they may not look the way you want them to look and you just already missed out on what you've already manifested. So make sure that that's something that you keep in mind as well. And your energy, like I stated, affects your work. So when you're constantly thinking about you do some prosperity work, you do any kind of work and you're like, this is not going to work. Or when is it going to work? You know, how long is it going to take? That's putting blockages in your work, whether you know it or not. You constantly thinking about it and constantly wondering when it's going to work. What's the time frame? There is no time frame. And if you ask me for a time frame, I can't give you a time frame. You know, I may be able to pull some cards and give you a general time frame to where it may work out, but I've done things that worked in a matter of days. I've done things that worked in a matter of months. Uh, it took a year to do. So there is no particular time frame on the work, okay? And I'm never going to tell you, hey, it's going to take two weeks to do or two days. You know, I'm not going to do it, okay? So um, I also wanted to get into divination, so I've had a lot of people purchase reads and then I have some people that's like, hey, when are you going to do the reading? You know, and I typically have readings out pretty quick. If you ever purchase one from me, I normally get it done within a day. But, you know, I've had people that write me and say, hey, when are you going to do my reading? They just bought it. I have to be in a certain energy state and I have to be in alignment when I'm doing your readings or else your reading is not going to be accurate. If I'm not feeling well, say I got a migraine, which I get very often with doing these readings. If I have a migraine, you don't want me doing your reading when I'm not feeling up to par, okay? You don't want me to do a reading for you if my energy is not right. If I'm irritable that day, I'm not going to touch anyone's reading. I'll make sure I get my energy right. If I have to spiritually cleanse or something of that nature, which I do anyway, then I'm going to make sure that is done before I do a reading. Also, it's a process. You know, when you're when you're reading cards or you're doing any kind of divination, you have to shield up, especially when you're reading for someone who has other things and, you know, other issues going on in your life because that's that energy can come off on me. And I'm not going to have that. I'm just being honest. You know, I want to help people with their problems, but I don't want to take on their problems or any of that energy. So, you know, when I say I'm going to do your reading and I'm going to have it done in a certain time frame, I'm going to do it, but you got to make sure I got to make sure that I'm in the right state uh, before I come doing your reading and pulling your cards because I don't want it picking up on any kind of energy that I may have on me already. You know, I want to make sure that it's accurate as possible. Okay. All right. So, um, 
And another thing I want to talk, touch on lastly, as far as the divination is concerned, I've had people who have gotten readings on the same subject a couple times, over and over and over, and they haven't followed any of the advice that the cards have given them. Okay, with that being said, you're going to still continue to go. The purpose of divination is to get advice typically on a situation and get any kind of messages that you need to know. So if you're not following that advice, if I pull a card and I say, hey, you know, you're, you want to read it on love. And I say, hey, this person's not right for you, blah, blah, blah. The cards are telling you you need to let it go. But you still want to pursue it. Don't expect, you know, a, a different outcome. Okay, and then especially if the cards tell you to do something in particular, like, you know, do this, this, and this, so it can give you this outcome, and you don't follow that advice, don't expect your outcome to be the same, because your readings can always change. It's not set in stone. Your readings are affected by your actions and uh, the steps that you take with the advice that you're given from the reading. So divinations are for messages and for advice, not what you want to hear. So the reading tells me that you're not going to reconcile with this guy. I'm not going to tell you it says that I'm going to say, hey, it looks like <laughs> you need to let him go or it's not looking good. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. So, I mean, if you want someone to sugarcoat for you, you need to go to another reader because I'm not going to do it. Okay. And like, um, even like I said, with the energy, if, if my energy is not right or even my mom's energy, when we're feeling your orders, like if we're feeling off that day or we're irritable at that moment, if we get an order come through, we're not touching it at that time until we get our stuff together because we don't want that energy transferring over to you guys and to your things that we're sending out, which is why you hear a lot of people say, you know, on our reviews that the products have such good energy because we make sure that we're in the right state of mind before we go to mixing any oils or powders or anything. We have to have our energy in alignment and that's the same way that you have to be with your work, okay? It's not just, you know, you get a candle and you just burn it, you know, there's prayers, there's cleansing, there's protection, there's steps you need to take. And it's not always something that's just really quick and, you know, let me burn it and go, you know? So I just wanted to come on and just, um, you know, go over some of those things and I'll get a little bit further into, um, some things with the crossing work, you know, how, um, you know, different things work as far as, you know, hot foot powder, for instance, using hot foot powder and how you can accidentally hot foot yourself, you know, if you're trying to hot foot someone else. So, you know, different kind of things that you need to think about before you get into any kind of, of that work. But first and foremost, educate yourself first before you try to, you know, go into any kind of baneful crossing work or even before you try to dabble in, into any kind of extreme love work. All right. So um, if you guys need any products, I am going to uh, put the link to our Etsy below. It's www.thirdgenerationconjure.store. You can also like us on Facebook at Third Generation Conjure and follow our Instagram at Third Generation Conjure. Until next time, bye-bye.